Welcome in to the 24-7 Sports YouTube channel. We come to you with some breaking news out of the college football recruiting world. The number one player in the 2024 class has officially locked in his commitment to the University of Georgia. Quarterback Dylan Rayola heading to the back-to-back -back champs. Here to react about all of this news, we go to our director of recruiting, Steve Wiltfong, and our director of scouting, Andrew Ivan. Steve, I'll start with you. How did the back-to-back -back champs land the top recruit in this cycle? Well, they were a program that's pretty much been in the picture the entire process for Dylan Rayola, other than the eight month stretch where he was committed to Ohio State from summer to December when he reopened his process. Georgia was first to offer Dylan a scholarship back in June of 2021. He's been to Athens six times, Emily. And that sixth visit is really what sealed the deal. He was there in mid-March, got back around Kirby Smart and that staff. And I had a chance to ask him if that was, you know, getting back to Georgia on that visit, you know, is that what put the Bulldogs back on top? He said, definitely so refreshing, special, because USC was making it interesting with visits uh, in, in January and early March. But getting to see Georgia play in the national championship game, coming back in mid-March, remembering why he loved this program so much. Now he's officially in the fold for Georgia, a place that has led for the majority of his recruitment. Andrew, you are, of course, part of the rankings team that has him, as of today, as the number one quarterback and number one player in this cycle. So what does this addition mean for the Bulldogs? Well, it's crazy, Emily. I was talking with someone in Athens recently, and they pointed to the 2024 recruiting class and saying, hey, we got to get this thing right. And it sounds wild. I mean, Georgia back-to-back -back national titles. And one of the big components of this 24 class was quarterback. They needed to find an arm of the future. Dylan Rayola, to us, is the clear-cut top quarterback in this cycle. He's a big frame passer, six foot three, 220 pounds plus, uh, and he can make all of the throws. You know, that's what I think really stands out about him is that arm. He can layer the football, he can show touch. It's not always a fastball. He can use a variety of different arm angles. He's got a baseball background and that all shows up. I also just like the stature and how he handles himself in the pocket. He's a guy that can move around, create a little bit, but he can also take a hit. And Georgia in the SEC consistently contending for a spot in the college football playoff. I mean, there's going to be some uh, juiced up edge rushers coming around the corner. So I think Dylan has the tools to eventually lead Georgia to another national title at some point down the line. Again, Georgia needed a signal caller of the future. Rayola was the top guy out there, uh, and they got him locked up. Steve, this edition now puts Georgia as the number one class in the cycle. Still a ways to go until this thing is wrapped up, but what does he add to this already strong group that Kirby Smart has put together? Well, now they have two quarterbacks in the fold line. Puglisi also in the mix for Georgia right now, and he's a talented, strong arm passer that has the traits that you covet at the position. But I think with Dylan Rayola in the fold, Georgia now has a realistic chance of finishing with 24-7 sports, top ranked recruiting class of all time. And our history dates back to 2010. That Texas A&M class two years ago is the bar, but now you have Dylan Rayola in, the, in this class here right now, alongside the number one ranked quarterback, Ellis Robinson, five-star linebacker Demarcus Riddick is also committed and then they're in the mix for so many major targets moving forward. I think Dylan Rayola is going to help Georgia land a few of those. And when I talk about that, I instantly think of five-star receiver Ryan Wingo, our number two ranked receiver in the country. Jaden Riddell, one of the most coveted tight ends in the country. I have both of those young men forecasted the Georgia on the 24-7 sports crystal ball. I think beyond those guys, you have Georgia firmly in the mix at the top if not at the top, near the top for guys like K.J. Bolden, five-star safety. I think they're the ones to beat for him. I still love Georgia's position for the top-ranked linebacker in the country, Sammy Brown. I think that Georgia's got a great chance. I would even give them the edge right now if I was handicapping it for five-star edge rusher Dylan Stewart. And those are just top 10 players, Emily. I could go up and down the top 50 players ranked on the 24-7 sports network. And, and George is in the middle of it for so many of those guys. And Dylan's going to be a lightning rod for recruits to Georgia moving forward.
Now, Andrew, it's uh, hard to follow the impressive class of quarterbacks in last year's cycle, but when it comes down to this group, how wide is that gap between Dylan Rayola and the rest of the quarterbacks in this 2024 cycle? It's it's pretty wide. I mean, Jaden Davis is our only other quarterback that is a five star. Last year, we were always talking about the big three, right? Arch Manning, uh, Nico Iamalieva, uh, and I think if Dylan were to maybe let's say reclassified, he had jumped in that group. I still think he'd be a five star prospect for us. Uh, I, again, Steve brought up. Georgia has Ryan Puglisi already committed. We talked about Georgia needing to find a quarterback that didn't take one last cycle, so they're retooling that room. But I, I think Rayola, you know, he, he gives it a little bit different of an element. I mean, you're seeing it there on the film. Again, he can move in the pocket, he can run around, and it's just that arm strength. And, and, and this is a guy that has a, a, a pretty sound resume. He's thrown 628 pass attempts on Friday nights. You love to see that number. That's one of the top ones in the class. And then the thing that really sticks out to me He's only thrown an interception once every 62.8 uh, pass attempts. So this is a guy that takes care of the football. Uh, he isn't one that's going to take a bunch of risks. And if you look at what Kirby Smart and Georgia have done, they've assembled a ton of talent on the defensive side of the ball. Really, they just need a quarterback that can manage games and when he needs to make some big time throws. And I think Georgia is getting that in Dylan Rayola. I think they're honestly doing a great job on the offensive side of the ball of adding some talent and adding some playmakers. Again, we know that defense is going to be sound there in Athens. And I said it a, a few months ago on the 24-7 Sports College Football Recruiting Podcast, you know, of, of the schools that recording uh, were after uh, Rayola, you know, if you, if you wanted to get, be a first round draft pick, why would you go to USC? I mean, that's the spot. Lincoln Riley, we know what he's done with quarterbacks. If he wanted to make his own name for himself, I think Nebraska was the option. And if you really wanted to win a national title and go up against the best guys uh, every day in practice, then Georgia was the obvious choice. It seems like his camp settled on that. And I think going there and, and practicing at UGA is only going to make him better just because of the collection of talent uh, that is there at Georgia. Yeah, those of us who have been following this recruitment for a while know that this is certainly not the beginning of his recruitment, and I shudder to say that it's the end. I mean, he was previously committed to Ohio State for about seven months there, of course, decommitted, but now we have eight months to go until that early signing period in December. So, Steve, what does Kirby Smart and company need to do to make sure that this is the end of the recruitment for Dylan Rayola and they lock up their top guy? Well, Ohio State just didn't feel right to Dylan Rayola as he continued through his process after giving the Buckeyes his commitment. But I think that his heart is at Georgia again. This is the program that offered him first, invested in him first. He's known Kirby Smart and this staff for years now. He's really hit it off with Mike Bobo, and he's been to campus several times. And look, he could have continued through his recruiting process, but after that Georgia visit in mid-March, he had to get back to Nebraska. It was scheduled. It was the next weekend. It's his dad's alma mater. His uncle's the uh, offensive line coach. Not only is, his, is it his dad's alma mater, but his dad was an All-American there. They know so many people well there, including the AD uh, who, who played football there. So that Nebraska visit was planned. You're not backing out of that. And, and really, it was an opportunity for him to be sure what he thought on Georgia uh, coming out of that visit where his mind was virtually made up. So he goes in Nebraska the next weekend, cancels all his trips after that. And now it's just about finding the right time to commit to Georgia. And that time is now going into a summer where Georgia is going to host some of the top recruits in the country for official visits. Those guys will go into those visits knowing that Georgia is the number one ranked recruiting class in the country and that Georgia has the number one ranked quarterback in the country. And maybe that entices a guy like Jeremiah Smith, who's a longtime Ohio State commit that Georgia's still trying to chip away at, among all the other guys that I mentioned on, on the previous question. But I think Dylan Rayola is locked in, ready to go at Georgia, and is excited to get back up there. I wouldn't be surprised if he camped there to work with the coaching staff and get a feel for Coach Mike Bobo in that capacity. His official visits the first weekend of June, so we know he's going to be there for that as well. And uh, he's been recruiting guys behind the scenes for about a month now for Georgia as well. So uh, he has not, even though he's now publicly committed, you know, behind the scenes, he's been an ambassador for the Bulldogs for quite some time now. 
And this is obviously a big day for the Georgia Bulldogs fans, a moment of celebration for them. But I've got to ask about the teams that are, are coming in second here. There was, of course, Crystal Balls out for USC, a big player in Dylan Rayola's recruitment, and Nebraska, you mentioned them. What does this mean for those two programs now as they're left searching for their signal caller? Steve. Well, USC has their quarterback of the future uh, on the roster right now, Malachi Nelson. You get greedy, you get Dylan Rayola in there to push the room and compete and made the best man win. But talking to Coach Riley last week, he's excited about the young players that he has uh, coming into that program. And look, USC's a program, Lincoln Riley's quarterback pedigree uh, and offensive pedigree, they could maybe flip another high profile guy that's committed somewhere else right now. I think eight of the top 15 quarterbacks in that 2023 class ultimately decommitted and committed somewhere else. And Lincoln Riley, his background gives USC uh, that type of potential. If that's what they choose to do, maybe they prioritize Elijah Brown for Matter Day uh, moving forward as well. So they they could basically still kind of do what they want with what Lincoln Riley's done. Now, Nebraska, they didn't sign a quarterback last cycle. Uh, I, who's their quarterback of the future? Uh, you know, they got some talented older guys there. I think the portal is going to be very relevant for them at quarterback again, if, if we're handicapping it right now. But look, that's a that's a program that's story, tradition rich. Anyone that visits loves it. And uh, Matt Rule and his staff do a great job of building relationships with guys. So maybe they get the spatula out and flip somebody or maybe someone as a senior plays their way up Nebraska's board and, and is a late bloomer that ends up becoming the guy at Nebraska down the road. All right, Steve, Andrew. that's the name I was going to mention for, for USC, Elijah Brown. You know, I'm a big fan of him right in uh, the Trojans backyard there at Matter Day, uh, 29 and one on, on Friday nights. I mean, that's not a bad consolation prize. And you mentioned they already got Malachi Nelson there. I think for Nebraska, it, it's an easy sell. I mean, they pushed all their chips in on Dylan Rayola. Uh, they had to do that, right? He's got ties to the program, but Matt Rule, he's been on the other side in the NFL. He can go to some of these young quarterbacks and say, hey, I can get you to the league. We really like what they've done in terms of uh, getting faster, adding more traits to the roster. And, and you know they're going to be coming through all the senior films. I, you know, just tossing a name out there, Trevor Jackson, uh, a kid from the, the Sunshine State, recently punched his tickets to the Elite 11 Finals. That's a quarterback I think they could, you know, maybe peek at. And there's going to be more names here over the next few months. And, and like we said, the senior seasons will play a big part. And you also touched on this as well. There's always quarterback movement. There, it felt like there was more, uh, more so than ever last cycle. I mean, heck, Dylan Rayola, he's already made two commitments. You know, why can't another quarterback out there change their mind? Yeah, this thing is far from over. Andrew, I just want to end here. The Georgia Bulldogs are in the middle of a spring battle right now at the quarterback position. So all the fans want to know, when it comes to Dylan Rayola, how ready is he to immediately suit up for the Bulldogs when it's his time to go in 2024? Well, I think he's going to need, you know, a, a few years to adjust to life in the SEC, right? You know, get some seasoning, learn the offense. And I think most people, when we think about Georgia, I mean, there's a new offensive coordinator in there. Todd Monken is out. Mike Bobo takes over uh, and is going to be coordinating that unit. So I, I think he's going to need some time. And in Georgia, that's OK, right? You got Carson Beck there uh, and some other arms. Gunnar Stockton, he, he seemed to have a, a good spring. So I, I would think a, a few years, I mean, but... Heck, I mean, uh, when you look at St Stetson Bennett, a three-star recruit, that he exceeded our expectations. So, of course, Dylan Rayola uh, could accelerate that timeline once he gets on campus. But I would think probably a redshirt year uh, and then work his way into that uh, rotation at quarterback. An exciting day for the Georgia Bulldogs as they land the number one player in the class of 2024, quarterback Dylan Rayola. Guys, thanks so much. <laughs>